Welcome into The Approach, presented by PointsBet Sportsbook. I'm the prop queen, Ariel Epstein. This week, the PGA Tour heads to TPC Southwind for the FedEx St. Jude. The first leg of the FedEx Cup playoffs is this weekend, so we've got to make sure we have an expert to break it all down with us, and that's PointsBet's ambassador, Paige Speranek. Paige, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for always having me. Of course. Um, when Just mindset-wise, before we dive into golfer by golfer, how does the mindset shift for these golfers going into the playoffs? Well, I think they've had a little bit of a break. Well, some of them have. <laughs> and so I think they're refreshed and ready to go. I know they've been trying to make changes for the last couple of years to make the FedEx feel like a major, something that's important. And I do feel like the guys take this very seriously because they're playing for a lot of money and this is very important to them. So they're definitely grinding and getting ready for it. Let's talk about last weekend, Wyndham Championship. Lucas Glover secured the win, fifth of his career on tour, and punched his ticket into the FedEx Cup playoffs with the win. Why was Glover so good? This really hurts to say because I did pick Russell Henley, and I was rooting for Russell Henley the entire way to get it done, and uh, the luck of the green was not going his way, and it was going Lucas Glover's way. Lucas Glover has always been a really solid ball striker, but he has been a bit streaky with his putting. He has made some changes recently, and a lot of guys on tour were saying that they've been playing with Lucas, and his game has been looking really good, so they're not surprised by this win at all. He's been on tour for uh, 20 years, his 20 year, 20th year, and he's made over $30 million dollars so he's always been kind of an under the radar player but he is solid you mentioned things not going golfer's way that's how justin thomas must have felt when he just came up short barely missing a birdie chip it would have secured his spot in the playoffs jt had a season to forget went out fighting what did you make of his performance last weekend JT is a fighter and he was playing for something a little bit bigger than playing for the FedEx Cup playoffs. I think he was trying to show Captain Zach Johnson that he is ready and he can compete when it comes to the Ryder Cup. And he was even quoted saying that I would much rather play in the Ryder Cup than go and play in the FedEx Cup playoff. And so you could see where his mindset was, especially on 18, where he hit that drive left, hit an amazing out to even just give him a look at a birdie chip and barely miss that chip something about justin is that he always plays with so much passion and he cares so much which which can be a pro and a con i think this year he has cared so much and he's trying everything to get back to the justin thomas that we all know and love but i am not worried at all for justin thomas and i do think we will see him on the Ryder cup you talk about mindset Let's talk Bryson DeChambeau, who on the Live Tour, he shot the first sub-60 final round in Live Golf history, shooting a 58 in his final round. How impressive is that? I don't think people realize how incredibly impressive shooting under 60 is. And I talked about this where you have four man scrambles and they have mulligans and they still can't shoot a 58. They have to cheat to be able to shoot that low. And he had a bogey too. It was incredible. I mean, we've seen Jim Furyk do it before. And anytime someone shoots in the 60s or under 60, you just have to look and go, how? How must that feel to be so good at golf? And he said something that was really interesting that I have preached all the time on social media is that you have to play from the front tees and get comfortable going low. And that's something that he was doing. And so that's a great tip for everyone is go from the front tees, try to make as many birdies as possible. But I mean, he shot a 61 before he shot the 58. Two amazing rounds of golf. Maybe we'll see some of those amazing rounds this weekend at the PGA. We're going to TPC Southwind for the first leg of the FedEx Cup playoffs. Before we get to the golfers that you like, who are you fading this weekend? Gosh, I was going back and forth between three players, Max Homa being one of them, because he just never really plays well on this golf course. His best finish is a T42. And then Xander Shockley, because I didn't like the price. And then the same for Patrick Cantlay. His price, it just wasn't desirable. And he hasn't won the season. And every time I pick Cat Patrick Cantlay, I'm always a little bit disappointed. So I'm like, we're him this week. I want none of that. 
<laughs> yeah, um, I always like to start things on a pessimistic note because <laughs> yeah. I'm here in New York. I had to take the subway this morning. I am just in a mood. So let's try to make things a little bit more optimistic around here. Who's someone under the radar people could look at as a long shot? There are two players here. The first one is Ben on. He played really well last week and he kind of slipped on the radar there because everyone was looking at Lucas Glover and Russell Henley. And then there was Ben on just trucking along and playing quite well. And I think he can carry that confidence going into this week. And speaking of confidence is JT Poston is another player that I'm liking. He has been playing some of the best golf and we've seen this all season and when the player starts trending, you want to stay with them. We saw that with Ricky and Jason Day. And I think JT Poston is another one to look out for. He made headlines a couple weeks ago when he tried to go for it and he's, he ended up, you know, hitting in the water and he said, I'm here to win. I'm playing to win. And I love that attitude and that mindset. And I think that he could have a really good week. Let's try to get you to have a really good week. Last question before we get you out of here. Some redemption from such a close call last week. Who's the outright winner? So <laughs> I'm pick, staying with the same trends that I've been doing. When you see a player who is playing well, I'm going to keep picking them until they get it done. And that player is Tyrrell Hatton. I have been picking him for a while now, and he has been playing quite well. But this course sets up perfectly for him. You have to drive it straight. You have to be great with your mid to short irons and you have to be a fantastic putter. And guess who is close in all of those categories to being at the top is Tyrrell Hatton. So I think it's going to all come together for him and um, fingers crossed that he gets this win because I've been picking him so much and I need him to get it done. <laughs> Either one of two things happens. One, you look like a genius for finally getting it right because eventually he's got to win. Or two, we just call you insane because what's the definition of insane? sanity when you go back to something over and over again yeah so I mean I've been there I already I put the Mets in the graveyard in baseball yesterday they're done I already bet on them a hundred times and they're losers so I totally understand Paige Peranic points Feds ambassador thank you so much for coming on here again thank you and that's it for us here on the approach presented by points Fed sportsbook I'm Ariel Epstein we'll see you next time 